Hi, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for stopping by. This week's video is going to be something new. Um, new to me, anyhow. Um, I had a friend whose dad passed away and they were going through some of his stuff and she came across his candle pin bowling balls. And she asked me if I could make her some kind of a memento out of them. And so we're going to give that a try. So what I'm going to do, hopefully, is I'm going to make a goblet out of this. And I'm going to try and split it about 60-40. I'm going to use the 60% side for the for the goblet itself. I'm going to use the 40% for the base, and uh, I'll turn a a wooden stem for in between. So hopefully that'll work out. So what I've got, what I've made is uh, I got to cut this in the bandsaw. So I was um, asking some of my friends in the UK and uh, Pete Ravencroft from Pete's Twisted Trees uh, suggested that I use the bandsaw, and he suggested that I go. Those proportions to give me the best uh, to give me the best result. So I'll put a link to Pete's uh, YouTube channel. He's an interesting guy, smart guy, good turner. Uh, in the description, so check him out. So I've got a big blemish in this, so I don't want to show up in the piece. And it's it's a bowling ball, so it's marked up. Uh, when I finish turning it, if it successfully turns, uh, I'll buff a lot of this out, and I can sand some of it out when it's on the lathe. I don't know what the inside color is, so I don't really. When I, when I cut it open, we'll find out, but I don't think I can turn it away. But I want this blemish um, to be in the top of the base or the bottom of the cup, one or the other. That way when I turn uh, the, the mortise to receive the stem, that this will go away. So I'm going to locate this, I've cut these two pieces of plywood out, and they're made so that when this is mounted on another piece of plywood for a sled from my bandsaw, that the ball just touches the bottom and it'll just touch the back. So it's going to be in there as securely as it possibly can be. So I know that if I have this blemish sitting out here, then I should be okay and I should, that'll be in the center of where the, the uh, stem's going to go. So one side or the other, top or bottom, and that'll take it out. So I'm going to set that down nice and gently right there. And just for a little extra, um, because I don't trust just the fit of this thing between. I am going to put some hot milk glue on it. Because as you can imagine, turning something or cutting something round on a bandsaw is not the safest practice. So we're going to make it as safe as we can. Okay, so I had a little change of plans. I simplified this shake a little bit. I was able to get uh, the second side on and glued on both sides. I'm just going to use the fence on my bandsaw. I've got it in a place where I'm not going to have my fingers anywhere near anything. And so uh, we're going to go really slowly and see how this cuts. That went much easier than I thought it was going to. And also the resin on the outside is thick, so that's good. I can polish up those outsides and maybe make them look like something. Excellent. So I'm gonna get this mounted up one way or the other and I'll bring it back when I get it mounted up put on the lathe. All right, so my jig actually got a lot simpler than what I was intending to make. My dad was in uh, Father's Day today, so we were hanging out here a little bit. And uh, he said, why don't you just stand this up and glue it to the table and then fit the other one on. So I did just put a little bit of hot milk glue on the table, stood it up and uh, and just set this one up over top of it and hot milk glued the other side. And uh, rotated it around until I, till I had it glued all the way around. And then you saw how I cut it on the, on the bandsaw with the blade. Cut surprisingly well, so I was happy about that. So I'm gonna take these off the faceplate and uh, or off of this plywood and get them mounted on the faceplate. So here's something really interesting about these bowling balls. If you look, that's a very accurate line of where the center of this is. And you can see that the resin, or the, the uh, core of rubber, whatever that's made out of, is in center. So these balls aren't very well balanced. And so uh, maybe we can blame some of the misses on that. So I'm just using a regular rake uh, carbide cutter, square cutter, uh, just to see how this turns. I've got it mounted with hot melt glue onto a sacrificial block that's mounted to a faceplate. And I'm just cutting it flat here where the mortise goes in for the stem.
So I'm using the same chisel here, but I've switched out the cutter now and I'm using a negative break cutter. Uh, this cuts a little more smoothly than the other. I don't want to take any chances on chipping it out too deeply. So you can see these have been repaired a couple times, or one well, of these ones. Well, there's at least two, two repairs, and here's another one here. So I don't think I'm going to get to turn to the bottom of that, but there is a little void. I'll fill that with CA if I have to. But I got a little farther down to go here to get it trued up. So there's some pretty good, uh, pretty good nicks in these things, and there always are. You can see the little crack right here. Actually, there's three of them. I'm gonna fill these in with some thin CA. These aren't very deep. And you can see it's not gonna really affect the look of it. So that's the glue, and this is just activator that makes it harden instantly. And you can see that's gonna be very hard to see when it's finished. This, on the other hand, is gonna take a bit of glue. It's really, really deep. I can see it goes down there another more than a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to put an abrasive paste, or I'm going to use abrasive paste before I turn <clears throat> the, the dovetail and mortise in the bottom because I'm going to end up gluing that with epoxy and I don't want any, any finishes or anything on that when I get to it. So I'm going to finish the outside with this now and then I'll turn the dovetail in the bottom of it and I won't have to worry about having any, anything oily or any compound in there that'll affect the ad adhesion of the wood to this resin.
Okay, so I made a decision to go with these pin jaws. I do have a dovetail on the outside end, so they are meant to hold light things and expand into them. Uh, more commonly, they'll use to, to turn on tenons or, or put a dowel right inside the piece, but they have a dovetail on them, so I've turned a dovetail mortise on the bottom of the piece. The reason I didn't want to go with my conventional jaws on this is that I would have had to take this back uh, quite a bit farther to get to get a diameter big enough uh, to get the jaws in there and expand them. And it would have made it, I, I like what I've got proportion wise here. I really didn't want to make this any shorter than it was. And so that's why I chose to do it this way. You can see the shiny circle of metal at the inside of the ball and then right directly across on the outside closest to you there's a little repair on the outside of the ball. Well, this has been drilled and actually had lead poured into it. So that made for some interesting turning here out of the center. All right, so normally I would not leave that that thick, but because of a combination of a few things, the vibration that I'm getting uh, from this metal, and you can see where it's vibrating, it's, it's, this is quite smooth, and you can see the, the chatter right in here, and that's, that aligns with the metal. This one isn't quite as bad, but uh, for some reason this one seems to be giving me some grief. Um, anyhow, bowling balls, of course, by nature, have a hard life. And I don't know how sound this resin is, and I don't want to, I'm getting a little vibration here now, and I don't want to have it shatter. So I'd rather make it with a few thicker walls and actually have something than, uh, than trying to get it too thin and have nothing left. So I am going to sand this up. All right, so I've <clears throat> sanded this up, and I've used uh, Yorkshire Grit regular and microfine, and it came out really well. Um, Yorkshire Grit actually polishes, I've done it now on copper, and I'm pretty sure this is lead. Um, it really shines up copper and lead well. Um, the only issue, the only issue is any, and like with anything that you use on metal, it will leave you the black, you know, the black uh, filings that come off of the metal. But with resin, where there's no grain that it can get into, it doesn't affect it. So it works fantastic on this. Now, if this was a piece of wood that had that ingrained, I'd have that black stuff right into the grain. But um, on the deer antler ring that I did with copper, and with this, it really worked well. So I'm going to put some Hampshire Sheen um, high gloss on now. I'm going to do the inside because it's not have to see the light of day again for a little while until I get it done. Okay, that come up nice. So, if all else fails, we have a small bowl, but uh, we're still shooting for a goblet. Okay, all I'm going to do here is square up this shoulder so that my um, so that my dowel when I turn when I'm going to put a walnut stem in this will fit in tightly.
All right, I've got the base mounted on here now, and the base should be an easier turn than the top because um, for starters, I don't think there's any lead in it, which will be good, and um, obviously it's a lot smaller. Okay, I think I've gotten clear of all the blemishes, so I'm just going to round this down. I'm not doing anything fancy in terms of um, in terms of profiles because I want it to look like it was made out of a bowling ball.
So I had the camera off when I was getting set up here to put this uh, the stem in between the top and the bottom. I put the cup part of the goblet in the cold jaws and I turned it on to make sure that it was going to run true and it actually came out. And you see the scuff mark on it now. It came out and uh, just hit the, the corner of the bedway on the way down to the floor. And uh, so I have to clean that back up again here now. I'm sanded up to 320 here now all the way around. I'm going to put some sanding sealer on the walnut uh, stem and I'm going to let that just stay on there. I'm going to take the um, bowling ball itself uh, up a couple more grits. Then I'm going to Yorkshire grit the whole thing and then I'll finish what I can, reverse it. Uh, I may have to just polish this a little bit. So in hindsight, if I ever do this again, I will not finish turn the top and the bottom. I will, I will assemble them and put them on the lathe like I just did and do it this way because it's much, much better. All right, so I've got it sanded up now in the Orchestra Grit regular microfine on it, so I'm, I'm good up to here. I am gonna have to reverse it and just blend this last little bit in. So I'm gonna put some Hampshire Sheen high gloss on now and, um, and I'm gonna turn it around. this on the tailstock side, the live sphere, center, or a cup. Put some, just for added protection, I'm gonna put some paper towel between, this is a soft surface so it shouldn't mark it anyhow, but to make sure, because things tend to go bump in the night here often. So that was a bit of work to get here, but I'm happy with the finished product. I'm really pleased with the fit between the resin and the uh, the bowling ball and the walnut. It was a weird piece of walnut to turn, actually. It was really weird. I've never turned a... It just didn't seem to want to cut. Anyhow, it's very open, but I still should have cut better now. Anyway, I will get some pictures of this up. 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.